yeah, we could start now. Um, I don't not think anyone will join us. All right, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss chapter 16 of the Mastering Shiny book, Escaping the Graph. So this chapter is mainly about those components in a Shiny app that are very powerful that you can use along with uh, the, and they are part of the reactivity in Shiny, but they are not uh, clearly shown in the reactive graph. So some of the techniques and functions that we are going to learn about are reactive values and the combination with observe and observe event. Uh, so the first thing that we are going to look at is why doesn't or what doesn't the reactive graph capture? Uh, in one of our previous discussions, we were looking at uh, an observe event and I was asking uh, why don't we see a, a connection with observe event. And this chapter is actually about that, where we have uh, observe event, which is used along with reactive values or with the update uh, text input or any other type of input functions. And when we do that, uh, what happens is we don't really see uh, that in the reactive graph, but they are still powerful combos that you can use for different use cases. So the first example that we have here uh, has uh, two inputs, uh, which are the text input, where you can enter your name and an action button. And then in the server, uh, it would then create a salutation, a greeting, and then that is uh, generated in the render text. So let's first see this uh, in our studio. Uh, can you see my uh, screen that popped up? Yeah, yeah. So in this simple Shiny app, you enter your name, let me enter a simple name here, and it would create this, uh, or render this output uh, in the text form. If you look at the reactive graph, uh, here we see that uh, the input, and let me go back first so that we can easily refer to what these components are. So we have uh, the text input, which is name. We have that right here. This is the input NM. And then we also have the CLR uh, for clearing uh, the name, uh, the action button. And uh, this is uh, connected to the reactive expression. Uh, this reactive expression is the high expression. We takes the input name and then makes a reactive expression. Now that we have this, we can render that in the output. So generally what we have seen so far in uh, the reactive graph is that we have a named outputs which are connected with named inputs, or uh, in most cases we have reactive expressions between them and we have those connections. In this case, though, we also have observe event, uh, which is making use of the clear action button. And when you click on the clear action button, it would then update the text input. So if you go back to the Shiny app here, when I uh, type the name, it automatically created this uh, text output. And when I click on clear, it uh, I think the app is, is not showing up for, for us. Um, probably should show up here. Okay, I can try rendering it right inside of the cloud. I run it in the viewer pane. Yeah, so. Uh, here, if I enter a name, uh, it renders that. And when I click on clear, it clears it. Now going back to the React, uh, React log uh, graph, we see that input name is connected with that reactive expression, and that is connected with the output. But the observe event that we have here, which has actually a connection with the input name because it changes the name that we don't see. 
we see that there is an unnamed observer which is connected to the action button because of this statement. But we do not see the connection of the observer with the name, which we know exists because this changes NM input. So this is one example where you can use this technique to update your inputs, but a reactive graph will not show that connection. The next uh, set of examples are in the case study section. So the first one is one output which is modified by multiple inputs. Let's see this one here. So it has two parts. Uh, the first part has uh, these two action buttons for uh, drink me and eat me. And that uh, when you click on those action buttons, it will then create a text output. So the server shows how. Uh, we have a reactive values object. Now this is another technique. In the previous one, we have seen the update text input, which is used along with observe event. In the second example, we are using reactive values where we have one value, which is notice. Initially, it is just an empty character. And then we use two observe events based on the two action buttons. The first one is for the drink action button, and the second one is for the eat action button. Clicking any of these would update the notice value inside the this reactive values object. And Essentially, whatever you have in that uh, reactive values object, that is then rendered as text. So let's run this app. And if I click on drink me, we get this message as specified here. If I click on eat me, it then changes the notice value and reactive values and we get the second option. Now, uh, let me try showing the reactive graph for this. So this is three, one. And stop it. Not really logic here. Let me try again. All right, so the shortcut control F3 works in Polycloud as well. So here is the uh, reactive graph for this. We again have drink and eat inputs, which are connected to unnamed observers. And then we have the reactive value notice, which is then connected to the output. But we know that the output notice is actually dependent on uh, the inputs drink and eat, but we do not see those connections here. So this is another example where uh, we do not really see uh, the connections in the reactive graph, but still powerful techniques. Uh, the other way to look at the same example is where um, there is an additional value, which is n, which is then updated. Let me first uncomment that part of the code. And now if I run it, now instead of uh, drink or eat, we have up and down. Uh, which essentially have n as a value in the reactive values object, which is updated if you click on input up, and it is decreased if it is uh, if you click the down button. So here, if I click down, we see increments and decrements. So if you look at the React log result of this, we see the input down and input up. Uh, these two inputs, which are connected to unnamed observers. And then the reactive value n is connected to the output n. 
but we know again that the output n is also connected to the inputs down and up, which we do not see in the reactive graph. Any questions so far? No, very, very clear. Great. Uh, this same graph is shown here as well, where we have unnamed observers and we do not see a connection between up and down inputs with an output. Another technique is when you want to accumulate inputs. So let's take a look at that example, that's 16, 3, 2. This also has two versions. So here's the, the app first. So if I enter the name and then click on add, we see that not only it renders uh, the output text, but also clears the name here. You can see that here. So we have a reactive values object first created, and then it is updated once the add button is clicked. So when you click that, it takes that reactive value, whatever value is specified in that, and it is updated with the input name, which is the value coming from the existing uh, data, and then the R names. Uh, sorry, the R names is the existing value, and the input name is uh, the new value that we have entered here. And along with that, now that we have an additional name, along with that, we also clear uh, the current name that was in the text input. So if I enter another name here and then I click on add, now we see two names are added, but at the same time, the text input is clear. And now if you look at the React log result for that, again, we see input add, which is connected to the unnamed observer, which is right here. So input add is connected to this observe event. And we also see that the reactive value names is connected to the output names. We also see this uh, currently invalidated uh, input name value uh, or the input, which we see right here. This is a text input. Right now in the app, we don't have any name. That's why we see that this is not green. But if we go to the start, uh, the first thing that happens is that the observe event input add is uh, is activated. It checks for both. It first uh, starts with input name, sorry, input add, and then it makes a connection with the input add button. Then it looks at the output, which is names. It makes a connection with the reactive values. And then we invalidate uh, the value of uh, the add button after clicking on it. That invalidates the observe event. And then we now have updated value. And then we enter a name. So now we see that it is also updated. And at the end, once we uh, add another name and the input is cleared, and then we enter the second name, and then nothing is added more. So in the app, the name is cleared because of uh, because of the clear uh, action here. And once it is cleared, uh, there is no more name in the text input. We see that this is also uh, empty. So again, we do not see a connection between the output names with the inputs. But this is a useful technique for using reactive values with observed events. The other version of this is where we can add a delete button so that we explicitly delete the name instead of just clearing it when we are adding a new name. So 
in this case, if I add the first name, if I want to delete it, I can do that, but I have to specify the name again to explicitly delete that name. Let's take a look at the code. We see, again, we have the text inputs, the two action buttons, the add and delete, and the output that uh, comes out here. And then we have a reactive values object, which has a name, a names object inside it, which is an empty character in the beginning. Then we combine the existing name with the new name that we enter in the text input, and also clear the text input so that it is ready to take a new name. This all happens if we click the add button. Instead, if we click the delete button, it will check the difference between the uh, current input and the existing names in the reactive values object. And at the same time, also clear the text input here. If you look at the reactive graph for this uh, app, we will see the same thing that the essential connection between the output and these inputs is not shown in the reactive graph. But we can use these uh, methods to uh, accumulate inputs in a Shiny app. Another uh, example here is pausing animations. Let's see that example here. In this case, we have two action buttons as inputs, start and stop. And we have initially created a reactive values object, which has two values running, which is initially false, and n, which is initially zero. If we click on start button, it will update the running value to true. If we click on stop button, it will update it to false. Other than that, we also update the n value within the reactive values object, but we do that using the observe function. Now, if we do that, without using invalidate later, this observe function will run as long as any inputs inside it or the reactive values inside it are changed. So in this case, we are using an if statement. We are saying that if the running object is true, which happens only when you have clicked on start, then it will add or accumulate the n value, which is part of the reactive values. We use isolate to isolate the value of the current value of n, because if we do not do that, then because this is an observed statement, this will run into an infinite loop. It will continuously update the reactive values object, particularly the n object inside reactive values, and because it is updating itself, this observe statement will not stop running ever. And so we have to manually stop the app, otherwise it will continuously run. So that's why we use isolate. At the same time, we also use invalidate later here, which will invalidate this observer after 250 milliseconds. So based on these inputs and observers, we have this output that depends on the reactive values object, uh, particularly the N object, and it will render that text. So if I click on start, it will continuously uh, increase the number N, and I click on stop, it will stop it. Now, if you look at the reactive graph, We see the, these relations, but uh, we do not see the relationship between the output n here, the output n with the inputs. We have input start, input stop, but they are connected with observe events.
the reactive value n is connected with the output, but the output we know also connects with the inputs. It depends on the inputs. So although these are powerful techniques we can use, they are not really shown in the graph. Um, any questions, any comments here? Yeah, um, just a small comment. Um, do you think that, I, I think we can, sim we can simulate the same action of the observe functions, function uh, with like event reactive, I think, in this particular case, because we are changing a reactive value or reactive, uh, one of reactive values that we are storing mm -hmm. and we're using isolate on it. So if you want to, re, um, if we, in, the, in the previous chapter, we talked about uh, if you want to combine the reactive plus isolate, you could do this uh, using uh, uh, reactive, I think reactive yeah. event or something like that. Uh, yeah, event reactive, yeah. Uh, yeah, I Even think so. I, yeah. I think yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I would agree uh, that you can use event reactive. Um, yeah, but yeah, I haven't just really to simulate. tried yeah. and validate later with re event reactive. Yeah, and I think it's, it will work because invalidate later it doesn't depend on the um, the context that it's in. Mm -hmm. It just depend on uh, it's just invalidate every uh, the the context. The, the full context of the function itself. So if if it finds that, um, yeah, it doesn't depend on the input. So it just uh, invalidate um, the the de the the dependencies of of the of the of the function that it's called in. That's what I I think about it. But I don't know if it's, this is what's happening behind the scene or not. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to experiment with the man reactive. It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think this is um, the more we dive into the how how to escape or how how to uh, how to use this kind of patterns, the more we get like closer to how to control the reactive graph more and more. Um, yeah, we talked about the the re the reactive values and uh, observe uh, in the in the last chapter, but it was like. Uh, like very de very detailed one, the same way the same way we see here uh, that we could uh, we could use it as a way to manipulate the reactive graph without uh, and that's not showing in the reactive graph itself. So I think this is could be dangerous and at the same time it's could be useful at the same time. So it's you you have to be careful when you when you are trying to use this kind of functionality. Uh, you have to be under yeah, more understandable uh, or more understanding of of how of the context of your problem that you're trying to solve, mm -hmm. uh, because this could be cre creating dependencies without you knowing that you create dependencies. This will make sign app calculate more than it need to be calculating. Yeah, yeah I think that's the next uh, section here, anti pattern where. Uh, you could use just a reactive expression instead of observe because observe would do a lot more work. It will, as, long, as soon as something is changed, observe will run. And so uh, it will also run even if uh, you have things behind the scenes in different tabs. Uh, so that's an issue. So in this example, they have uh, the server function where you have reactive values, which is essentially a data frame. So where we have the car data frame as an example, and we want to uh, update uh, the display of the car data set based on the number of rows that the user selects. So that's why there's an action button input n rows. And once you change n rows, it will change the DF object inside reactive values, and it is all inside observe. So as soon as you change the number of rows, this observer will run. And so this will run every time you do that. Now this is 
This example is an inexpensive operation, so it is fine for this small example. But if you have like a data table object or a long running calculation, every time you change even one input there, observe will run again. So uh, that would be a lot expensive operation, especially in production. Uh, the same example, you can fix that pattern by instead using a reactive expression and uh, skip the observer. So we have reactive expression. Now reactive expression also have a dependency on the number of rows. So reactive expression updates as number of rows are changed, but we do not uh, update a reactive value there. So the observer doesn't run in the same manner. Instead, we, we then uh, use uh, the render plot function here, uh, similar to what we were doing here, but instead of depending on the reactive values, we now have the uh, reactive expression. So this could be a long running calculation for the reactive expression that would also be long running calculation, but it won't run right away. It, it would depend on the uh, on this. and if we compare these two one to one uh, in this example, uh, they, they would be fine because they won't take very long in this example. But one problem here is that if a table or plot are in different tabs and they're not currently visible, the observer will still draw or plot them. So this example is an anti-pattern due to that. Uh, but if you use this example instead, and the plot, uh, output plot is in a different tab, it will not run it. It will not update the plot unless we click on the tab and then open it. So that's one advantage of using a reactive expression here instead of the observer, because the observer will always do this calculation. For reactive expression, it will wait until you open that tab. Yeah, uh, and I think this, this reactive expression saying that it's it's uh since it's calculated once and then create the dependency based on the input that they they depend on um we we only we only uh, recalculate it again if if and only if the input changes so yeah. we just um mm -hmm. uh, we make it an efficient um thinkable way of uh, of executing stuff based on just our uh, our usage usage and we yeah. don't waste uh, any or make an extra work as it said here so yeah yeah uh, yeah so in this example i have actually been when i was learning this part uh with, with my actual app i had the trouble that uh, sometimes my app would take very long to load. And that was because I was using observe instead of using something like this. So once you open that tab, only then the calculation happens in the reactive expression. It won't update it otherwise. So that's the advantage of using reactive expression compared to the observe. Um, and here is the um, reactive graph for that. Uh, where we again have the unnamed observer, uh, which is this thing here, and uh, it depends on n rows, but this does not have a, uh, the number of rows does not have a direct connection with the data frame. In this case, uh, data frame does have that connection. And so, uh, because this is a reactive expression now, and so plot and table, once you actually put that in view after going to that particular tab for plot or the table, then the app updates if n rows has been updated. So I guess this uh, was a relatively small chapter. Uh, this concludes the discussion for today. Um, and next week we are moving to the best practices section. Yeah, cool. That would be fun, I think, because we will dive into functions and modules, and they are very heavily used in the R world. So, um, and yeah, highly, highly recommended. Um, so in case in, in this in this example that you see here in in this chapter, I think the observe function that um 
the difference between the observe function and observe event and observe uh, and, and reactive uh, event. Uh, I think the the observe one is more like um, very core function that uh, that been called in the observe event. Uh, we talked about this in the last chapter, in the previous chapter. But um, I think the more recommended way of doing the of doing it is using the API that built on the observe, not the observe itself. So what it what I'm what I'm getting from this chapter is that. Uh, do use it to observe uh, for for the patterns that we discussed, like accumulating input or posing animation and, the, and this kind of stuff. But at the same time, be careful if uh, if you don't understand how it, how it's uh, the behavior, how its behavior or or how it behave uh, in certain stuff. Don't use it and use the um, the ones that uh, already pre uh, built for you, that which is event reactive. Uh, uh, and uh, the other reactive uh, functions that uh, already been published for or uh, been shared as an API for the observe uh, functionality. And uh, when when you when you find us something that really we wanted to be dependent or create a dependency on it, and you could you want it to get calculated first and then use it multiple times. I actually use this in an in example, in a, in a PyShiny example, that they we have and we always have a table and a plot everywhere. So I created a module with that have a plot and table that depend on just one calculation, which is reactive value, and the reactive or sorry not not reactive value, reactive expression, and the reactive expression when it change it only changes based on the input, just a kind of input that it changed. So if it's a slider or if it's um, um, a selectize or any type of input that you could change, uh, you, you just build the, the two things at the same time, which is the plot and the table when it, when you only just change the slider. So this this type of creation, creating dependencies is what we will use in a, an actual apps mm -hmm. since, um, creating this kind of stuff or uh, as a module and then make just one input that controls them or multiple inputs co that control them will uh, will make your life easier for uh, in a in, in a mental model in your mental model of at least uh, when you when are trying to uh, build uh, the reactive graph at least yeah I agree so, yeah. the same experience. Cool. So I think that's uh, that's the end of the session. I uh, thank you for presenting, Amir. I think this was a small chapter, but again, again, it's very like uh, very concise chapters. So the the reactivity that we are discussing here is what you we will build on when you when you building a complex uh, shiny application. But it's not the only thing that you will depend on uh, when uh, it's, it's, it's one of the core stuff that uh, really makes Shiny uh, distinguish between its uh, competitors. But at the same time, it's, uh, uh, it's a good way of thinking about dependencies and creating apps and reactivity, reactive, uh, um, how, to, how, how user would react uh, to your apps. And how the apps, sorry, how the apps is will react to your users, and it's really a, a design mindset. Like it's not like, um, yeah, it's not it's not like a, a very fixed thing, but it it changes when you based on the user requirements that you have, and what you want to make it interactive, and does it does it have to be a selectized that has have to be uh, a text, any type of inputs. How you create the inputs and how you change the values in the input itself again in the when you're using reactive expression or, or uh, observe uh, observe event or even observe so yeah it's a very uh, very fruitful chapter i think and, and yeah thank, thanks thanks everyone for attending this session and um i don't know who who will like present the next one I think Vinkisu would be uh, presenting the guidelines. Um, yeah. Yeah.
so we so will we'll, uh, yeah we'll get the general guidelines and then we you, you will get the functions and shiny modules and packages and i will get testing and yeah bookie so will get security and you will be getting uh, the performance uh, feel free if you have if you have any type of questions about uh, the next chapters because the next chapter is built on uh, more the programming programming part of shiny not uh, the very cool concept like re reactivity so uh, it's like it's just a programming so uh, very very unique concepts for our language and uh, specific to shiny app so yeah thank you thank you everybody for attending and okay see you later see you guys later bye